Any with Heather Locklear? No, no, that was Richie Sambono. <laughs> Richie Sambono. Yeah. Sambono every day. I always just thought it was like, I don't know, I, for some reason I always thought Bonnie Vare was like a unique name. And then I was like, oh, wait, no, that was Bon Jovi. Yeah. Bon Jovi, Bon Jovi. Bon Johnny Vare. <laughs> Bonnie Vare <Bear> Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite Bon? <laughs> yeah. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would yeah. be pretty great, actually. I mean, bon honestly, Jovi does Bonnie Vare. It turns out, yeah, when you, when you just have like uh, electric guitars... And a bunch of a bunch of you know, and a drum set. It's a misleading toy. You can just have any just, lyrics. It's called it's called Bonnie Vare, an evening with Bon Jovi. The people, the tickets were so confusing. <laughs> it was at the Cinnabon Arena. <laughs> I was like, the Cinnabon Arena presents Bonnie Vare or Bon Jovi. I mean, I would go any opportunity I have to just put my hands in some hot cinnamon rolls. And I wear them like muffin. Like you mittens. don't have to go to mittens, mittens, not muffins. Wisconsin for that. Mm. I can do that anywhere. That's yeah, and now Cinnabon is popular with Wendy's. This is our ad read for the week. Oh yeah. So you can also get cinnamon mm. rolls at Wendy's because they need to get the fuck out of malls. I, I've and always they can't afford standalone locations. Every so. time I've ever eaten a cinnamon roll, I was like, I really want to put like bacon and cheese and 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 ground beef. I love ground That's beef. Disgusting. I want to put that in there. Have you ever seen one not in a mall? A cinnamon not, not in a mall. I don't um, think there's ever been like a standalone location. No, I mean, or like at least they're not near the areas that I'm illegally allowed to to walk. Which is surprisingly a lot. I mean, it's a little too much to be honest, you know? No, stop getting trespassed. Well, I find that if I throw myself in the river, I can, it's like a shortcut. I can go faster <laughs> from yeah, where I Yeah, but they have to keep getting you out of the river. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I still save like there's eight hours of, of walking, There's footage Bobby. of Teddy getting rescued from the LA River. After first half, half, half hour of walking, my foot starts throbbing. And every time I step, I start like yelping. <laughs> so you just like take Take me current. So I just, I, I just, I'm like, all right, you know, I, you know, it's like just take keep these asking people. Do you know where the closest river is? <laughs> I, and then yeah. when they tell you, go, is it heading north or south? Yeah, and I, I keep walking with me. I keep going with me. He just take does a little wind check. Mm -hmm. Checks the wind. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I, 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 you know, I like to, I like to say, like, yeah, I may not be the most musically inclined, but. I am a talking head that takes me to, that takes you to the river, just like David Byrne. So, <laughs> I you know I I think that sometimes I, there's a charisma that rock stars have, a star quality that I also possess. No. And surprisingly, a lot of people will f take me all the way to the river, and some of them have fallen in accidentally. But mm -hmm. I usually didn't do anything. I was Jesus like, hey, steady me. I was like, I need I, I need something to push you, off. You of. found a stranger to be like when you're like, hey, do you know where the river is? And they're like, actually, can you just show me? Yeah, that's what they, they do. <laughs> they just take me. They take me. I mean, like you. Know, no, I usually try to find like and someone. more than one has fallen in. Yeah, well, more than one, more definitely more than one, more than five. Okay, several, half a dozen, maybe, 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 maybe a baker's a dozen. dozen, baker's I dozen, baker's dozen. And um, I'm trying to think like how many have fallen in, how many, how many got out. I don't remember. Anywho, nature's bus, the yeah. river, you know, Cinnabon and Bon Jovi. And yeah. Cinnabon uh, it's, it's, it's a shame there's no Cinnabons close to a river. But it's a real shame. You have a phone call. Yeah. I do have a phone call. I think it might be Donna. Yeah, where, where's Donna? Did she just drop you off? Or well, no, no. How'd you get here? You're not wet, no, so I know you didn't take the river. Well, I'm going to... Okay, so Donna let me take her car. Did you? She Did said she, I, she gave you? me permission. She gave me expressed uh, intention of, of, of permission. Uh, she did. So in Teddy terms, that means that there was absolutely no... Bobby, you're no not going to tell her. Don't. I'm not going to tell her. She's not calling you. No, 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 no. I'm not going to answer it. Oh, of course I don't want to She stole her car. Well, I didn't steal her car. Oh. She didn't need it. She, uh, well, well, she was too busy cleaning up all of the Alfredo sauce that I threw at the wall. I knew that was. I shattered it at the wall. I threw it. I was like <laughs> Alfredo. I was like, we make Alfredo from scratch. And I'm like, no, not the store bought shit. And I. And what's the recipe for that? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm not the one who volunteered to cook. Oh, so you're just mad that she had pre-bought Alfredo? I told her I wanted Alfredo noodles and breadsticks to dip my Alfredo. And if you hadn't seen the pasta jar, do you really think you would have been able to tell the difference? Um, absolutely. I would have probably been able to. Yeah, yeah, I would have. You eat poop. So. Listen, I... <laughs> <laughs> you have the palate of a man, like... Uh, I know that, but, but I know that oftentimes if you, if, for any sort of palate, yeah. okay, that it's better when it's fresh and made by Donna on, like, the day of. Rather than store bought, because store bought, yeah, store bought's got preservatives. <laughs> it's got it's got uh, like minerals things, nutrients that your body hasn't nutrients. seen. Nutrients. I mean, we nutrients talk about that it. your body hasn't seen in months. Nutrients, Doctor Anthony Fauci. 
probably created. Teddy's been living in, in a lab, you know, an annex for a while, and then now he's finally got the blessing of living in an apartment, and he's turned on into some sort of weird slave creature. There was a paid research study for me from between the years of 2013 and 2017 to stay inside this underground bunker. Oh yeah, how much money to did you test get the effects? I don't remember. I would, I, you got I, fleeced again. So, so it was a prank. It was it was a prank that apparently I I. I I don't want to say that anybody was murdered, but it, we got really desperate <laughs> down there when we ran out of food. And it's a reality show that just the first person can't, can't air now. The first person the we ate was the person who knew the code to get out. We didn't know he had the code <laughs> until we got the video later on. He's like, "Yep, everybody, like time for the pizza party," and you know, which would get really close to the incident you had recently at the escape room too, which is crazy. <laughs> okay, you know, the, yeah, but the escape room was a little bit more. I would say I'm more responsible for that one. No, you were responsible for the other one too. And, and I, I really thought with the escape room, like I was like, you know what? I missed that rush. I missed what it was like <laughs> spending twelve. 1200 days of, of rooting underground of escape with murder well i mean we you know we started with four, with 47 people no 57 in an escape room no i mean in the original bunker oh no that's and then it got down to like i think by the end there was seven and a half of us oh my god i know seven and a half is I how mean, long were you in there I mean, we were in there for four years. Oh, my God. It was supposed to be like a four-day thing. But I, we ate the guy. We resorted to cannibalism too early. You ate more than one guy. Well, we started with that guy. The other guys didn't have the codes. <laughs> but we would use, like, the the pulp and things of one person to marinate the next person. Oh, that's good. And How did you choose the next person? I would point my finger at them. <laughs> Basically, I... In this, in this, in this, in this world where there were no laws, <laughs> this bunker that where was there, a part of an experiment. I mean, it was twenty thousand square feet. Oh. It was big. <laughs> okay. And 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 it was kind of every man for himself. And I was the first one who had the appearance of a temperament to actually dig my teeth into another person. Yeah, be, I believe it. And you know that I mean, they, if you want to say I'm an alpha, you, you could say I'm an alpha. Tissue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and but it was an interesting time because it was probably the closest I've ever had to a family. I mean, there were when, with the fifty-seven of us. I remember when we first the first day we had one of those giant rainbow. Um, um, uh, I thought you said there was like seventy-five. Of you. No, there was fifty-seven. It was like Heinz fifty-seven. I, I remember that because <laughs> was, this a, was this sponsored by Heinz? Well, well, I think actually it was because most. Of the supplies that we had to eat. <laughs> was just ketchup. For, for, it was ketchup bottles. Or beans. Is this where your beans love started? Oh my God, Bobby. I totally blacked out about the beans. Did we have, just, did we have a breakthrough in group? I just remember because I remember being surprised by how much the insides of a person look like beans. Okay. When well, you first we opened them up. Talk about this. But like, but no, but like <laughs> there was a giant, like an, like a um, uh, rainbow parachute that we would all like, you know, like lift our arms up. That's fun. You know, it? It and then we would run. Well, that was like the first day. And then by the second day, you're tired, your arms are tired. And you're like, why is there nothing to eat in here except ketchup? <laughs> I mean, it was like stuff for us to do, you know? <laughs> it was only ketchup? Ketchup and rainbow parachutes. What about beans? But, no beans? but also to talk to one another. Okay. And I mean, over time, there were people who obviously maybe were a little, um, they, weren't pow they weren't strong enough to talk to me. Mm -hmm. But I met lots of families, like moms and dads and their kids. I met lots of people who had... I mean, and really, this story ends with there being seven of you left. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Well, <laughs> it taught me a lot. You know, it's kind of close to they all ever get to go into war, but it might have been a war that I started. And I mean, and, and there was just a lot of politicking that uh, the environment was fertile to, um, to, to, to just be uh, taken advantage of and, and created. And, mm. but, you know, by the end of it, do I regret like completely just dis detaching people from their humanity and and enduring four years of maybe a self perpetuated um, struggle of life or death that I ultimately was on top of? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I could have during those years I could have done other things. I could have watched fun shows like How I Met Your Mother. Okay, it's, well, I could have met my mother. <laughs> 
All right, well, episode 18, folks. Episode 18, sponsored by Cinnabon, Bon Jovi, Bon Iver, and Heinz 57. It's not sponsored by Heinz. No. It's not sponsored. It's going to be. That was a Heinz commercial. Those <laughs> no. poor people. That's like the worst Heinz Those commercial. Those poor people. Yeah, everybody look into the weird Heinz 57 experiment. They sponsored from 2013 to I, 2017. Mm, I mean, when you put enough barbecue sauce on a human rib, it tastes like pork. Horrifying. It's just different. All right, well, episode there, 18. Yeah. <laughs> episode 18. <laughs> Almost at twenty. Hey, we're legal now. We can drink. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I can I can finally call this uh, this episode up and say, hey, how you doing, John? Today? Yeah. Stop doing that to our Patreon followers, please. <sighs> hey, they like it. You like it, right? Nope. Everybody join the Patreon. This is what I sound like when I call. I go ding ding ding, and then it's like three a.m. in the morning. I try to make it exactly at three a.m. on the dot. Uh, just because I think people appreciate that. I don't think anybody appreciates. And then I just leave a voicemail. I go. <sighs> It's so uh, gross. <laughs> uh, the witching hour is the perfect time to just enjoy the the harmonic resonance of uh, of of my breath. I mean, people underground did it for years. They, I was, I was the white noise. They waited for me to fall asleep before I, I would let them fall asleep. Right. So anyway, Donna didn't want to come today. Uh, that's not true. She but, didn't want to come. That's not true. But also, we were gonna do uh, Patsy today. Uh, but we got some interviews that we want to do, and we want to make it a little bit. Uh, we want to make it right, mm. so that'll be next week. Yeah, yeah, no, because we were talking about how we talked about John, and then we had talked about Burke, and then we talked last week. We talked about the '90s TV, '90s TV, and now and this week we were going to talk about Patsy, but we're going to do that next week. We're going to do it next week because we saw a post that came up that kind of drew our attention. Oh yeah. Uh, so we're, this this special is going to be about Chris Wolf. Yes, this Chris, Chris the Wolf. journalist. Oh! Who, <laughs> we'll, put, we'll put that in post. <laughs> well, he, yeah, come on, woo with me. Oh, oh woo, woo. <laughs> That's a spirit. That's, oh, we're upsetting You're my dogs. You're so good. We're upsetting my dogs. You know, I heard that Balto, um, that you remember Balto from the movie Balto? Yeah, the animated yeah, Balto. cartoon dog. I heard that he committed a hate crime. He smashed a, a bottle on a, on a Korean guy in Boston in That's the 90s. Mark Wahlberg. And blinded the guy. That's Mark Wahlberg. Oh, it was Mark Wahlberg, not yeah, Balto? I think Mark Wahlberg. Oh, Mark Balto. Wahlberg of Wahlberg and Mark Wahlberg for uh, other things? Oh, yeah. wow. People know he did that. And, you know, he's been very regrettable about it. But he's a part of the 4 a.m. crew, you know? Me and the Navy. Every morning. Oh, yeah. That they were just. 4 a.m. crew. Come on. That they were just kill, hurt people? No, it's just he wakes up at 4 a.m. Oh. He works out. And he prays and shit. And so it's like, oh, all is forgiven. Oh, and I mean, I guess, I mean, if we're going to get him on the podcast, yeah. <laughs> he's still alive. The guy that the Korean man or Vietnamese man that, uh, uh-huh. well, that yeah, uh, he, Mark Wahlberg blinded. Marky, yeah, left his mark on him permanently. We're going to see who he thinks <coughs> did it. I bet he'll say, I'll bet he'll say Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Doing Chris Wolf, he was the journalist who the Ramseys oh, yeah. named in their uh, 2000 book, The Death of Innocence, as a possible suspect. But first, we're going to do some, uh, we're going to do some fan mail. Fan mail. So much mail. Fan mail. Fan mail. Normally Donna runs this shit, so. You know. I mean, but she's not good at it. She's it, horrible. It makes it easier for me to not have to do it. And, you know, and, and she really, it, it really doesn't take um, a lot of tea for her to make her fall asleep. Jesus Christ. Did you drug her again? No, I made her tea. All right. So her first bit of fan mail here. What is that? Uh, it's from Rise3486. It says, don't waste your time to listen to these two ass. What? Dot, 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 exclamation point. These two ass. These two ass. Okay, Rick, Dave, Faith, Faith. You know what? You got quite the nerve to be calling us ass when everybody has been talking about how much you smell like ass. <laughs> and I think they're friends with P. Diddy. Okay. All right. All right. Well, hey, uh, David Dupree, 8925. Hey, David Dupree. He writes, entertainment and information. What a concept. You son of a bitch. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, oh. That's good. Oh, well, hey. I mean, he could also be sarcastic, but either way, we hotted it. So. Thank you, David Dupree. Oh, because he's saying that we're informative and entertaining at sometimes, right, 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 right. Especially right. when Donna's not around, because she she brings everything down. I mean, honestly, she makes me fear for my life. Sometimes I've had a loaded gun in here. Donna? Yeah. Why? Why have you had a loaded gun in here? Because I didn't know if she wanted, if she had ill intentions against me. Wait, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm just saying it's not something that I've done. Uh, with the middle, I I didn't come in here expecting that, but I did only put like two bullets in there. Okay. Uh, uh, here's one from uh, Kelly Jackine seven one eight. We love you, Kelly. Hey. Lots we love of ya. facts, but Teddy is too Rodney Dangerfield times loud. Take it down a notch, because all the true info is taken <laughs> away from his craziness. Hot, hot face. <laughs> she loves you. No. No, she don't. She loves you. Rodney Dangerfield. She loves you. Too loud. 
You're not like Rodney Dangerfield. I'm never I gonna no not. respect. That doesn't even sound anything like you. No respect. It sounds like me, actually. This is the volume of my voice. All my Thanks. life, I've had teachers Hell, saying that, that I should be trying to find my voice and have confidence. And then I'm like, I don't my voice. I'm too high. I just can't. All right. All right. Let me relax. Let me relax before I start shaking. Okay. Well, I'll take that feedback into consideration. <laughs> All right. I'll consider it. Over the line, Smokey writes, uh, Patsy said Jesus didn't want this to happen. I guess he was outvoted. <laughs> Smokey. That is over the line, Smokey. That is oh, best pass line. You, you know, <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. Uh, Brian Bradley, 6871, writes, Yes, there's someone who looks like John Andrew Ramsey sitting down next to John Bidet in Christmas dinner pick. Oh. oh. That is an interesting... I think that was on the episode where we were asking, like, is there any other pictures from Christmas? We got to find this Christmas picture. You got to find it. Pick. Well, let me. I'll, I'll see if I can find it after we record this. I'm so used to saying there. dick pic. I almost said Christmas dinner dick <laughs> pic. Day, the, the Johnny <laughs> Ramsey dick pic. <laughs> Ew, gross. Dinner pic. Yeah. Dinner pic. I said jaw head, not jaw jaw head job. Well, you get the idea. Uh, LKB728 writes, this is the best courtroom coverage I've ever heard. Oh, that was finally. On a, Someone that was on the it. Burke episode a couple episodes back. It was riveting. It was not. It was like Mariska Hargate. It was pivoting. <laughs> it was pivoting. Um, it was... Mariska Hagate actually wrote me a letter. She sent me a bouquet of flowers, wrote me a letter saying um, I, that she she feels like she she has much to learn in the craft of acting. I don't think any of that's real. She did. She knows what the courtrooms are like. They got they all use that set in, in Silver Cup Studios in New York City. And, and uh, even without a set, we were able to convey like a true court, like the like the, like court. We are the court marshals now. You know, much of the parade. No, I think you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Hockate said it. I'm not the one who said it. All right. So on the episode with uh, John, uh, part two, where we did a bunch of his quotes that he made in a row. I'll put a little mm. snippet of that right here. We we're told by uh, John Douglas, who's a uh, was the fellow that started the FBI profiling uh, lab. Also got to know a uh, fellow by the name of John Douglas, who started the whole FBI profiling program. A very brilliant man. That uh, he spent a lot of time looking at it, and uh, his best assessment was that it was someone that was uh, either angry at me or jealous of me. And he said, "It's this is not about your daughter. This is about you. Somebody was either angry, very angry at you, or very jealous of you. And this was done to hurt you. And uh, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow because I can't imagine anyone being angry with me or certainly that angry. And I was like, oh man, I, I, that's a hard pill to swallow, number one. And number two, I, I've never made anybody that mad that I know of. I can't imagine that. You've been told that person was either very angry at me or was very jealous of me personally. And that's a heavy burden for me to carry. Uh, but I respect his, uh, his judgment, so... Uh, I think he's right, I'm afraid to say, but... We have no PR firm. Meaty Peach writes... <laughs> Those John Ramsey quotes are like watching Ruth Payne describe her relationship with Marina and Lee Oswald around the Kennedy assassination. I believe it's called the assassination and Mrs. Payne, and she makes the same statement nearly word for word across six decades. Definitely worth watching if you're into theories around what actually happened around the, the assassination. Oh, Meaty Peach. That's an interesting insight. And we already did the JFK assassin assassination uh, mm. in a other podcast. That was a Growing Pains JFK mm -hmm. assassination. Yeah, crossover. I mean, it was it was just natural because <laughs> I think every time anybody thinks of Joanna Kearns, Tracy Gold, um, my, 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 uh, Mike Server, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Cameron, um, Cameron, Cameron, what's what's what the actor's name? Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. Yeah, it's a and Alan Thicke. <laughs> they think of two events. They think of Pearl Harbor and they think of the Kennedy assassination. It's called the Siva tapes. Uh, <laughs> See if you can find it. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, and you know, and it was like one of those things because you know, because Jackie Kennedy, she also didn't eat food, just like half the cast of Growing Pains. Didn't. <laughs> I don't think that was one of the. She didn't eat no food. Oh, okay. that's why they were racing down that road because she was like, <laughs> "I need a burger. I'm gonna bite your head off or something." I'm gonna, you know. <coughs> They're like, should we take him to a hospital? That's why she's trying to grab the head. She's like, no, no, no he's fine. Yeah. Look, look. Oh, look, like, yeah, she thought it was like a ceviche. Uh, I'm only going to read part of this because it's really long. Okay. Oh, just to get the thing across. Uh, this was on the Burke uh, evidence episode we did a couple episodes ago, too. Ah. 
Burke was sent to his neighbor's house so he wouldn't be exposed to bad news. If he killed his sister and the parents were covering for him, why the hell would they send the nine-year-old to someone else's house to blab about it? A nine-year-old who killed his sister and you think he might not talk about it? Nobody would take that chance. Mmm. That's a good point. I mean... Oh, oh wait. Hold me to the end, too. Silly. Stop accusing innocent people, you ghouls. <laughs> <laughs> also, we weren't accusing him. We're just laying out the evidence that would support if he did it. Yeah. But- you know, it's not like I was the one that like drudged up this whole fuck. Like I'm like I didn't go to their fucking house and and kill this uh, kid and then like create this whole thing. They like <laughs> the, the, the they're all a part of it. And this is public information. And we have a right to peaceably assemble and we have a right to talk about things and the whole idea that like John that that, that John and Patsy would send Burke off to the the the, the mm. fleets fleet uh, the White House. Right. Which of the people, they were literally, they were there with them the night before, all right? So it's like, he'd be comfortable there. There wouldn't be all these police presence. But, like, they would, like, what, if they left him at the house, then it's, it's more likely that cops are going to come up to him mm-hmm. and be like, oh, let's... And they'll get permission to talk to him in front of the parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, it's the thing of, like, yeah. there's clearly some sort of conversation that took place that we don't know about beforehand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, again, there's the whole thing where the Ramsey's never... That there's no nothing in any of Burke's interviews where it suggests that his dad or his parents ever asked him what happened that night. We know now mm. that he's gotten up that night. No mm. one's ever asked him about it. So mm. there's clearly something that we don't know that was said. Mm. And if it's a thing of, hey, just, you know, don't talk to anyone or whatever or, you know, mm. whatever. Mm. If they and again, if you think that it's like if they think they did it to blab about it, then it's a thing of like, hey, you cannot talk about this. Like Mm-mm. if you did this terrible thing, it's like we've heard we've and we or if they've never talked to him mm-hmm. about it or it's the thing is like they, nobody brings it up. And it's mm-hmm. a thing of like Burke's already playing dumb because they can tell by if he set up something. Uh huh. Then it's mm-hmm. a thing of like no one's gonna bring it up. And then you know what? If he does mm-hmm. incriminate himself, like let him lie to the police first or somebody else. But mm-hmm. but it's like not gonna happen here. Well, you know, uh, and, and honestly, the like he was nine years old, and I think and I, and I don't I don't know if I'm meaning the word right, but like I I feel like people infantilize like like a nine year old can be cunning. You know, a nine-year-old can keep their mouth shut about something. Exactly. A Remember, he even said in that interview, if mm-hmm. I had secrets, you know, uh-huh. I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't tell you because they're secrets. Exactly. And it's like, so let's not act like this kid would have been a little, like a corruptible part of a master plan, mm-hmm. you know, in the sense of like, oh, but he would be, um, his defenses would be overwhelmed by um, the amount of ice cream sundays the cops at another house or the family, you know, mm-hmm. that he would, right. and he would end up blabbing like, oh man, this is better than killing my sister or some shit like that. <laughs> no. It wouldn't. He would have. He would have been caging and quiet and observant, and you know, yeah, this entire time, you know, probably mm-hmm. playing some fucking Game Boy or some shit. So we appreciate it, though. Yeah, we like. Uh, we like that. The I, like, I, like, I don't think I've ever been called a ghoul before, and I kind of like it. Yeah, fuck you. Don't ever call me a ghoul again. Brass Quintet guy one seven zero six. Yeah, you're. You know, you're like a ghoul. Uh, uh, you. Uh, fuck you. 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 Fuck you. Fuck oh you. yeah, stupid people, sick and jealous of decent Christians <laughs> who are wealthy. Go away, silly. <laughs> Stop accusing innocent people of your ghouls. I hope Donald Trump takes your life savings, you bitch. <laughs> Brass Quintet guy. All right. All right. Uh, Caleb Morgan, 6939, writes, Some of us hate to listen to people eating, or yelling for that matter. <laughs> I see ASMR. I turn it off. Teddy, put the can down. That's disgusting. She says that she don't like hearing people need to eat. It says Caleb Morgan. I think it's a guy. Caleb don't like to hear me eat or me talk and yell. <laughs> and what does he say? He turns it off. Well, bye. Bye. All right. And then actually, we just got one while we were doing this. Oh. Sitting here. No, this is good. Uh, Christian Nussa, 9976, writes, uh, you guys are really hilarious. I appreciate that you don't fall for the Ramsey deception. Oh, that's on the first episode. Oh, that's episode two. Oh, that's really sweet. And then on the first episode, they write, you guys are really killing it. Metaphorically speaking. Ah! <laughs> I love it. What's his name, Christian? Christian Nusser. So let that be a lesson. Whoever wrote that ghoul comment, you piece of shit. Jesus Christ. You don't, you're saying that you don't, we don't like good Christians. And then while we were talking about fan mail, we got That's fan mail <laughs> live from a good Christian. That just is Christian. Shut up. I'm telling Unless him. This is actually saying Christian user. No, that's not. It's Christian Nuss. <laughs> his name is Christian. He's a good Christian. Christian Nuss, yeah. I'm, let, let me let, let me let me screw my points in against this person, okay? It might not this person who called us a ghoul. You're exhibiting ghoulish behavior right now, Bobby. 
You need to quit. Well, thank you so much. I love the live fan mail. Yeah. And that's the thing. If you give us fan mail, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether we love you, or whether we give you what you deserve. Okay? Because some people want, are into that, too. And I'm happy to just shout at people. Um, but go ahead and comment on our stuff. Go ahead and join our Patreon. Um, there's more of the things that you feel like you love or that we're lacking on um, the on Patreon. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and start the episode then. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, I'm Bobby. episode 18. Yeah. I'm excited. Let's see if you get this right this time. Oh, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing bad mommy. I'm Bobby Pavlovsky. And I'm Teddy Ronald Reagan. This back here. And this is John Bonet today. Um, Mr. Ramsey, who is um, Chris Wolf? Chris Wolf is your client, and he is a person who came to our attention uh, as someone who should be looked at as a possible suspect in the murder of our daughter. So this was uh, that was in 2001 during the uh, deposition case that we're going to be talking about here, uh, the Wolf versus Ramsey. Oh, yeah. In which journalist Chris Wolf uh, sued the Ramseys for basically labeling him as a suspect. Chris W O L F E Wolf. Yes. Not like no, a no, wolf, w like Balto Wolf. No, it is like a Balto Wolf. Oh, it's Chris Wolf W O L F? Yeah, like a Balto Wolf. Ooh. Balto versus Ramsey Balto in the state versus, of Georgia. Right, right, right. And, but in a twist turn of events in this special case, uh -huh. the reason that he was really suing them is, is because he's saying that he believes Patsy killed her. And mm. basically he's saying that, so by naming him in their book, they were with malicious intent naming him as a suspect. Because I, So in oh. this case, he's trying to also prove that Patsy killed him. And a lot of that just relies on basically the, the ransom note, whether or not, oh. you know, If in uh, any way that she was an a, a accomplice to, by writing the note, she would be an accomplice to the murder, whether or not she like murdered the, the JonBenet herself or... If Jean Benet was murdered, or if she died from an accident, you right, know, right, right. But so he just had to prove that. But we'll get to that. Okay. So we want to go back to how he even came on their radar. Yeah. Kind of thing. Okay. And so we got to go back to the December twenty sixth, you know, nineteen ninety six. Mm. That night of the murder. Okay? Five years before nine eleven. Jacqueline uh, Burkhardt. Burkhardt. Jacqueline Dilson at the time. <laughs> but I've seen it labeled two different ways, so we'll just call her Jacqueline Dilson. Dilson right sounds like okay. a dildo. Uh, at the time, uh, Sorry, she was uh, supposedly dating, or what he'll later say, in a tumultuous relationship with Chris Wolf, who was a reporter. Yeah, he worked for the Colorado Daily and the Boulder County Business Reports. Okay. Oh, okay. And so basically, his girlfriend suggests they came home really late, and that his sweatshirt, which she would say uh, said SBTC on it, that she got him. Oh. It stood for the uh, uh, it was like Santa it was like Santa Monica Beach Tennis Club. Oh my God. But. That's not what it's sweater sweat. It was uh, Santa Monica Beach, like uh, beach club or something like this. Santa oh, Monica Beach Club. So SNBC. Was, yeah, something like that. Oh. Uh, so either way, it was wrong, and that wasn't right. But uh, so she said then, also the next day, uh -huh. when he saw the reports of John Binet, she said he became like really erratic and kind of like angry and stuff. Like, oh. He had a very emotional response. Jackie said that that Chris Wolf had was 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 howling mm -hmm. on Kwanzaa morning. On Kwanzaa morning, yeah, wow. absolutely. And so uh, this kind of caught the attention of Jeffrey Shapiro, the reporter from The Globe. We talked about him two episodes ago. Who She kind of was reaching out uh, oh, to yeah. the police, and she said that, you know, he was acting suspiciously. He gets named basically as a suspect, okay, mm -hmm. by her, all right? Mm -hmm. And what happens is that Steve Thomas ends up setting up a weird way of getting him in the station. Chris Wolf ends up getting pulled over. And it's, uh, they end up keeping him there at this traffic stop for like almost 40 minutes. Oh. And then they end up coming back and saying, out of Illinois, you've got like a suspended license. So it we need you to surrender your license now. Oh. He's from Illinois. He's from Illinois. He's from Illinois, but they said that he had like a suspended thing, so he had to surrender his license. So he surrenders it. Uh. Uh, he drives on a little bit down the road, and then not long after that, he gets pulled over again. Oh. And this time he doesn't have a license. So he gets arrested. For driving without a license. For driving without a license. That's ridiculous. And then they take him basically to uh, uh, a lockup. And I'll play the scene from Perfect Murder, Perfect Town here. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's our case. Uh, okay, slow down, slow down. Wolf. 
What's his first name? Chris. And tell me why you think he was involved. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What's your name? Jackie Dilson. We went to a party, but then he wouldn't eat dinner with me, so I went to bed alone. So I wake up around 5.30. This is the morning of the 26th. Right. I wake up around 5.30 and Chris is in the shower in his jeans and his sweater on the floor and they're filthy. Now, how did they get filthy? Then that night, we're watching the news and we hear that the kid is dead and he goes ballistic. I hope the bastard dies. He was abusing her. There's nothing too evil for him. He's talking about the father. Then the next day, he's like a caged animal. All he does all day long is pace. Pace, pace, pace. Hey, 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 legendary Boulder police. Don't catch child killers, but they sure can't put the cuffs on traffic violators. They can sure do that. We want your help, Chris. Beautiful. Boulder police <sighs> wants my help, so they bust me. Why should, why should I help? Because you have a suspended license, and we can't ask a judge to let us confiscate your car. No judge will do that. You willing to take that kind of chance? What do you want? What do you mean, no? No, N-O, no. I, I had nothing to do with it, and I'm not going to copy this. Well, if you didn't have anything to do with the crime, then what are you so afraid of? I'm just not going to take orders from you. You save it for the mollies and the hill rats that you round up on Saturday nights. Hey, quick smile. No. Pull your head up. Pull your head up! Do you like this wolf guy at all, or does he just piss you off? If you like him, we'll work him. If you're just pissed off, I don't want to waste any more time with this creep. He's here. Let's get samples. We can't unless we tie him to the Ramsey case. You want to spend half a day going through every minute of his life? No. Uh, all right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I... So, and that was actually Steve Thomas did do the Polaroid thing. I don't like the way that some of these cops operate. No, it's not. It's not great. That's not but, cool. You know, it, they wanted to get him to do it. And that thing that he wouldn't do was, yeah, the handwriting comparison with the note. But so then it's also the thing is that like what made him also really like nice for it, too, is that he's been tied to the what they said was the disappearance in a, uh, and murder of his ex-girlfriend, Susanna Chase. Oh. In 1997. Susanna Chase in 1997, mm -hmm. she, the, he had an ex-girlfriend. She was murdered? She was murdered, yeah. And oh it's my a thing God. where he said she wasn't really my ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, but so he was under that umbrella of suspicion yeah. as well. Where they, where they weren't official. They were just pork in. Well, the, maybe. He says he tried the data, but uh, either way, you know, it's not looking too good. for. And as Jeffrey Shapiro would go on to say, the other journalist, that like he's one of the most unlucky, unlucky guys ever. Because mm. it's like, you know, he gets tied to both of these things. That's crazy. You know, here's a guy who's just trying to get, you know, some dome listening to Blues Traveler back in like 1997, eating fucking Pizza Hut with Casper fucking hand puppets. I remember the little puppets. Uh huh. Like, the little hand the puppets. Like, glow in the dark. Yeah, Bobby. it made your hand smell weird. Like, oh. if I smelled that smell again today, mm -hmm. I'd be like, that smells like the Casper Pizza Hut mm -hmm. hand puppet. It's almost like the smell of a dry little, like, tiny pool. It's like some kind of weird smell where it's like, yeah. It's like chlorine almost. And yeah. Yeah. And, um, it's an antiseptic smell because it, apparently, like, you you can do whatever you want inside of that, and it's like protection from radiation. Like, or you could come in it if you want to, and it's not going to get anybody pregnant. For sure, for you sure. Know? But the point being that this guy, who was quite handsome, I thought in the thing, he's kind of you know, um, he, he was, I haven't seen a lot of pictures of him honestly. I haven't seen him in pictures of him in real life, but he in, look in, in the TV movie, he looked good. I like how that's not. I mean, that doesn't have to be a part of it. This is some sort of like I don't even think him and that one chick had sex, but we'll get to that. Well, yeah, yeah, that and that chick, she was hoeing. So hoeing? they were. She was hoeing. All, she was tilling a field. Yeah. Well, that one lady was pretty upset too. And um, Jeffrey Shapiro again, he would get pretty close with her. And oh. basically say that, like, it's a thing of, like, you know, she let him read a lot of uh, his journals, Chris Wolf's old journals and stuff. Uh -huh. And I guess it's like uh, he said that, you know, through reading his entries where he visited, like, South America, he expressed, like, some, some, some sort of Marxist ideologies that he could see him having a sort of hate for John's business. Chris Wolf also said that he didn't even know about John Bonet or the Ramsey family before the murder. Like it was a thing where it's like, that's what he even told the police. And he had also, you know, he said once he saw it on TV, that's when he knew. Oh. But Jeffrey Shapiro, through going through the journals, uh -huh. found that Chris Wolf did uh, an interview with a secretary at Access Graphics. <gasps> John who, Ramsey's company. John Ramsey's company, who, and that was oh. uh, the year before in 95. 
Oh. And it was more just, you know, it was like a small, small profile, but it did kind of disprove that he didn't know. That he didn't know nothing. Yeah. Were. And it's been suggested that he might have been having some sort of, you know, relationship with that secretary as well, too. And that, was she <clears throat> John's secretary? I doubt it. No. Oh. She's secretary there. But, but he did, you know, he had to, but he, he's <sighs> disclaimed. I mean, he said it since uh, then that it's like, you know, hmm. he's done a lot of reports on businesses and like he didn't remember doing that, but hmm. it was a very small. It was a small little thing. Some he writes reports and, and, and covers people all the fucking time, you know? Mm -hmm. It's probably something where it's like a hey, we wanna you know highlight blah 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 and he's like just has a oh this is gonna be you know right. eight six hours of my time. But like so that. then in nineteen ninety eight, then Chris Wolf decides he has a change of heart and he's gonna cooperate more with the police. On the advice of Jeffrey Shapiro, mm -hmm. he submits like DNA samples and stuff, and the Boulder police officially clear him as a suspect. He was cleared. He was cleared. <laughs> Great song. Mm -hmm. Glad it's back. So yeah, we, anytime we yeah. get an opportunity to clear somebody, but we love to do it. That was the end of his story, though. Either. In the 2000 book, The Death of Innocence. Oh yeah. Uh, we'll put that stupid Wham cover up or whatever that is. Yeah, <laughs> that blockbuster juggernaut, Kenny national Morgan's, bestseller, Kenny G, whatever. In their book, they also again rename Chris Wolf as a potential suspect. So they did it again. They did it After again. After he was cleared by the little police. Yes. So that spurs then oh. that lawsuit that we've been talking about. Oh. We'll, we'll put a little supercut here, some clips from the deposition. Um, what about the way in which the, the, what looks like what could be described as a tail with the G? Is there any similarity with respect to that? It, it swings to the left. Right. Do they look similar, the tails to the G? Somewhat. I mean, it's a Just G, a, you make a G. With the tail mm. to the left. Yeah, M too. It looks like a could pie. Be yeah, could be. You know, for all we know, it's a little horse or something that's truncated, or a poodle actually. A poodle. L one of those Ooh, uh, show poodles. I'm not, seeing, like, I'm not seeing the poodle here. This is a psych okay. test. Well, this or is a, <laughs> right, a Rorschach yeah. for attorneys. <laughs> and if she had, she would have had to draw it with her right hand. Which hand was the hard on? I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to ask you whether that was John or yourself making that statement in the book. Is, the, is that information from John or from you? Mm. And it's a, the, mm. in this thing, it's a thing. Again, this is the one where we talked about where he's saying that because Patsy, he knows Patsy killed her child. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that because she knows that she killed her child, uh, them naming him in the book is like basically with malicious intent. Oh my knowing God. that she did it. So a part of his trial was to try to prove that the Ramses did it. Oh my god. Well, it doesn't It doesn't go great. <clears throat> the Ramses ended up submitting a, a list of basically the undisputed facts of the case mm -hmm. uh, as a part of their defense. The Ramses have a list of undisputed facts. I bet it was like a Microsoft Word and there, document. There's a lot wrong with it. And there's a very great Reddit post. Uh, there's a two-part Reddit post by StrayDog77, who I believe uh, is the person that does the normal family podcast. Oh, straight so on. They're very, they, they got a great podcast on John Bonet that uh, doesn't say fuck. It'd probably be better if they said fuck. Oh, yeah. There you go. If they said fuck but sometimes. A great People, we're all adults. We'll link it in the bottom, but it's uh, basically it's 41 inaccuracies from the carnival. Because the, the, the judge would ultimately end up siding with the Ramses. Chris Wolf's defense, uh, while not great, he mm. had a hard time getting a lawyer out in Georgia. Mm. Him and uh, his lawyer that was in Boulder were, they talked about it on the O'Reilly Factor where they've been trying to get somebody that'll take on their case. And they said, nobody so far in Georgia, nobody oh. will take their case. It was a thing where That's they couldn't wild. get another lawyer to help them go against the Ramses oh in God. Atlanta. Because that was the thing is they had to do it in Atlanta because it's their home turf. Normally you sue them there. So they ended up getting, uh, they ended up getting somebody, but it wasn't in a, a good enough defense. Cause basically Chris Wolf, his whole defense was Patsy clearly wrote the note. So it's gotta be her. And the Ramses sent this really, really long list of undisputed facts, uh, which unfortunately gets labeled as such in the judge's ruling. It's ri it's ridiculous the amount of things wrong. And the judge, Judge Kahn's himself, herself, I'm sorry, in a 2014 Senate questionnaire during her appointment to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, Julie Carnes made a feeble attempt to distance herself from the verdict in the 2003 case. She says, My decision was based only on the civil record before me, which did not include the police investigative reports. The plaintiff had made little to no effort to adduce any facts in support of his contentions, and my order did not profess to answer definitively the question of who had murdered her child. Oh, what an easy way for her to just basically say, that I mean, she's she's got a point actually. She's pretty right. I mean, she's yeah, not yeah. there to solve whether the John yeah. Ramsey and did Chris it, Wolf's but Chris Wolf didn't present enough of 
and that could that <laughs> could be the fault of information you know, inadequate it is the fault of defense. It could be the fault of inadequate counsel because it's. I know, can see that as well. They couldn't find a lawyer, and I remember this is also the weird case where John's house got robbed before oh, they yeah. were going to start. And supposedly a bunch of stuff was Some taken. Stuff was taken. Yeah, maybe and could it have been weird, helpful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they dismissed that basically. Mm. Uh, Chris Wolf doesn't get anything. Kind of an embarrassing thing. It's like if he didn't kill it, then he doesn't have to worry about going to jail. Right. And, and honestly, if there was more, if there was more compelling proof that he was reason to be a suspect, I would see that he probably would have been charged. You know, uh, or or would have been talked about. But it sounds like even in that clip that you played earlier from John Ramsey, they uh, people try to refrain to say from saying his name. Right. Um, too much because, um, well, one, they know he's litigious too, mm-hmm. but then also that, you know, uh, maybe he's not really the person. I'm, I mean, it's a little, right. I mean, in, the, it, in that movie, they play him a little strange, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't have a lot to go off of. No. But so then, hey, and then in 2009, though, we'd have a turn of events where, you know, his girlfriend had always claimed that, you know, he was a part of Susanna Chase's disappearance too. He was linked to that oh, murder. Yeah. Well, it would turn out that in 2009, Diego Almos Alcalde uh, would be found guilty for Susanna Chase's murder. Oh. DNA in the case, there was semen found near the body, Ew. Uh, would end up indicating that this guy had done the uh, the brutal murder of Susanna Chase, which, which would then clears Chris Wolf. He's been cleared again. Wow. He's been cleared again. Okay, guys. So a double clear. And now I'm just realizing this as we're saying this too. Right. So that's 2009. So in 2010, crazy ex-girlfriend comes back around. Uh, now that one of the theories has been disproven, uh, she pays for an ad in the Boulder daily camera, which uh, uses a, uh, it, she shows the ransom note and then a side-by-side comparison with a uh, compilation of letters from Chris Wolf's journal. And we're talking about actual letters, like from the alphabet. Actual letters, yeah. She puts together this weird hodgepodge thing of letters, which are actually really convincing. Yeah, we're looking at it now, and it's honestly a lot of it's really, you know, it's suspiciously. Close. It looks like the ransom letter next to the ransom letter. It's suspiciously close. It's missing certain letters in it. It's 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 hard to say like where this came from, but it is a thing that makes you think. I mean, it makes you think what the fuck is going on because I, looking at it, it looks like a poorly Xerox copy with some letters whited out. Of the original first page of the ransom letter. And then some of them just look like straight from the actual note. Yeah. like Or it's like somebody trying to write the note to make it look like the note. And it, so, but this it, is mm-hmm. again, crazy ex-girlfriend uh, uh-huh. resurfacing. Again, One the year, year after, after. Yeah, the it, year after mm-hmm. Susanna Chase's ex-girlfriend. Uh-huh. And so she comes out with this thing, which again, it doesn't go anywhere. It just hasn't really responded to that, but... Mm. Uh, it's weird that she would take a paid advertisement to tell people, "Hey, look at this um, purportedly like like what the like what is this?" Because like if going under what of what you're saying, she's saying, like she went through his samples of his handwriting, yep, and then somehow like forensically, she like, got it, she got somebody to analyze it too. Handwriting expert Thomas Grogan, a forensic document laboratory incorporated, analyzed these two documents and confirmed in a court ready report that these were in fact created by the same hand. But it's like, but that's not necessarily him saying that they... He's the analyzing the source material that he's given, so we don't know what it was. Yeah, went. and it, honestly, to be quite frankly honest, it looks like the ransom letter and then the ransom letter, like slightly it's, smaller. It's pretty, yeah. It's got, it's like similar boundaries. The word, I mean, the literally, the shapes of almost every fucking letter and word in this thing um, are the same. Like, like the L, the L's, the strikes, the, 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 the down slash and the uh, horizontal, it's all the same. And it's like, it's, it, it anyway. It's, oh, yeah, that's right, this, that's why. It says her name's Jacqueline Brungard now. Jacqueline Brungard. That's what it was. So, so it was yeah, Jacqueline Dilson to Brungard. The ultimate message is ultimately we would like to see the case reopened, new evidence reviewed, and the killer brought to justice. Well, we would love to have the Get uh, over case it. reopened. Get over and it, Jacqueline. new evidence reviewed. This and is the years killer after brought to justice too. But that doesn't look like evidence. That looks like it's something again, it almost sounds like it's something that maybe, you know, you have like a multi prong um front when it comes to like um an offense. And you're just like, okay, we just hit them from all these different directions. And this lady sounds like she's on the take. You know what I mean? It's a big old octopus organization with lots of tentacles and suckers. Mm -hmm. And they're just sucking on them. Right. But it's also, I mean, it was noted that there was a document examiner. uh, He was appointed by the CBI to analyze analyze handwriting samples. He could also not eliminate Chris Wolf as the writer of the ransom note. This is before this weird compilation came out. Okay. So Patsy and Chris Wolf, (laughs) two people that have never really officially been ruled out. Wow. And he's just basing that off, you know, examining, you know. So the Boulder police uh, cleared uh, Chris Wolf. Some handwriting guy saw some other piece of, hand of his thing and said, I can't quite rule it out. 
and then and then this thing looks like it's the handwriting the hand the i'm starting to think jackie did it <laughs> eh, i mean why she, she's the one changing the name too um no but that's interesting and honestly it's weird because he's in such cl close proximity in such a strange way to this case and it almost seems like he doesn't want to like be mm -hmm. you know for him being like almost like a business beat reporter i almost wonder you know do, do those guys do they ever just do they just do like you know whatever companies in the area want them to do or do they actually investigate businesses because what if he was someone they wanted to frame right we just want to take a quick break to yeah. uh, shout out the producer of this episode. Yeah, the producer, for anybody that doesn't know, if you're a Patreon supporter of ours, like you should be. Yeah, you know, you're killing it in all aspects, you member. Know, I mean, my God. Uh, then uh, go ahead and do it. Yeah. But you get a special shout out. And, yeah. and, and you're sponsoring our episode, basically, so we appreciate mm -hmm. it. We're going to shout you out. So Who's our producer of this episode? It's E4 is here. E4 is here. I love E4 is I here. I love E4 is here, yes. Oh, my gosh. E4 is here is almost like Euphoria is here. No. Yeah. Oh, you think that's no? I don't know. Well, we're gonna have them on because we still got to talk to them. But uh, E4 is here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being an amazing producer for supporting John Manet today and our amazing investigation and, and pursuit into the truth. And if you want to, if you want to be a you know a producer on here, just go to patreoncom slash Benet today. T O D E T. Yep. And uh, you know, sign up. Spell it right. You can join it free. I remember too. You know. So yeah, you, you can do it free. Just, just scope just, it out. You know? But it's just a matter of just like, listen. You get some bonus songs. At the end of the day, we're all we all come from stars, and we're all gonna be bone dust. And it's like in your life, did you really show your appreciation to the things that brought joy to you? That's a good point. That's a really good point. It's really dark. <laughs> I got tired. All right. I'm going to call my mom. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, we're going to go back to the show now. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. And there was some weird report. I think it might have been a tabloid type reporting of when the cops uh, originally like looked over to his house or something like that. Uh -huh. They found a, uh, I think it was when they were like, they found like a, they found like a thing with John, John Ramsey's picture on it or whatever. And they had like a heart on it. It was like an article about access graphics oh. that's unconfirmed yeah but you know that's putting bizarre. it out there too but it's a thing of again but you see know, if i he heard about that yeah. if I, I, if that was something that like actually happened why do i get the feeling that the ramses would have been telling everybody and their mother about that mm -hmm. you know what i mean Bobby? exactly where it's like they're suspiciously because they know they can't that i'm them. hearing about this for the first time yeah exactly but it's also like so then was that even put out there in the first place as something they could then talk about you know what I mean? It's just all to that intruder theory is the original sin, too. You know what I mean? In the sense yeah. of like all like my whether it's whether it's Chet Wolf, um, whether it's um Chet Wolf, uh, the Santa Man, yeah, Chet, Chris all the, Wolf, Chris Wolf. No. <laughs> but like I mean, because there were other the people Santa whose Man. lives were ruined too. That Santa oh, wait, guy. Yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on. There was something else there too. Oh, there was gosh, a thing yeah. that said they knew each other. What? He knew the Santa McReynolds and uh, yeah, Bill McReynolds was a professor in the department that Wolf was getting his master's in. Oh my God. Bill McReynolds was a professor at a college. Santa, yeah, was the president in, uh, what is this? What, is this? Yeah. what? I was the Santa Claus for three years at their party, and I always liked the Ramsey party, so I called Patsy in particular and said it's time for a party. <laughs> Patsy, it's time for a party. Did you have a relationship at all with Bill McReynolds? No, sir. Did you ever spend any time with him outside the school? I have talked to him once in my life, and that was the day I tried to get into his class. Never been in his cabin? No, sir. Never been in his home? Uh, no, sir. What kind of lawyer doesn't step in here and say, like, my client already answered your question? I know. Like, Jesus Christ. You know, just, you know, these are not the same caliber of lawyers that the Ramseys are buying. You know what I mean? Wow. But what a small world. Bill McReynolds, Santa Claus, suspect at one point, who, he moved out of Colorado, didn't he? Who? Bill McReynolds. He moved out of yeah, Colorado. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, and they had also found that he had written a letter to Carol McKinney, who was also a reporter, basically said that John Ramsey was a part of the military-industrial complex and that he was a, basically like a merchant of death kind of thing. And this was around 1998, though, so this is post-murder. Oh. So he's definitely got opinions about John Ramsey because that almost explains, like, if John Ramsey's daughter, and you know who John Ramsey is because you're a business beat reporter who is in Boulder, Colorado, uh, where... You know, there's a lot of, you know, you got you got all kinds of companies out in Colorado and you got the Boulder International Airport. And there's lots of conspiracy theories about that, too, Bobby. And, you know, you got that giant, giant horse sculpture that killed the, art, the artist uh, when it was installed. Right. And, you know, all kind of crazy things. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's alien, like, uh, underground, like, um, bases and stuff. In but, the yeah. So, like, at the start, there is a lot of things, you know, it looks suspicious. The it looks suspicious. The uh, the note. He knows Bill looks, McReynolds. He knows Bill McReynolds. Could have yeah. been him and Bill McReynolds. 
I mean, it could have been, yeah. I'm not that gay. But, you know, the girlfriend ended up kind of, you know, again, Jeffy Shapiro would end up not- noting that over his real time, his relationship with her it was kind of weird where she kind of insisted that he also had something to do with the Susanna Chase murder early on because he had a niece named Susanna and like an aunt named Chase. Oh. And so she was kind of a little, you know, cuckoo she, for Coco She wasn't reliable as a narrator. And really just, she cannot take a breakup well because then it's again coming out in 2010. I know with this uh, a paid advertisement that she paid for herself to get them to look into this. but uh, Which is just weird because then it makes me think, oh, is someone just giving her the check to do this under her name? That's a good point. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Good that's what I'm thinking. It seems like it's a smear campaign that's almost designed, like if his claim, if he believes that like Patsy Ramsey wrote the letter and then suddenly there's this advertisement, you know, uh, a couple years after Patsy dies, um, one year after he's cleared of Susanna Chase's murder, um, well, not cleared, but the, her kill was found because they didn't really. I mean, that's him. cleared. Guy, then guy got he got cleared. Twice. He got cleared like three, three five, five times. But basically, then and then and then the year after that, as like you know, just like as a, a boom, 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 double tap. Like then there's like oh, this paid advertisement from the guy's ex, who <laughs> yeah. also like you know, she can't. She doesn't name him directly. She just says this recreated document was compiled from the journal entries of an individual who we believe mm. should be further investigated for the murder of John Benet. An individual we won't name who we've whose dick yeah, we've written. Yeah, you can't just be like my ex boyfriend killed yeah. John Benet. Like yeah, crazy. Chris Wolf. You know, but at the same time, it's like if I saw this in passing, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, yeah, that handwriting looks like that handwriting. But in this day, in the year of our Lord, 2024, with the amount of technology we have, not including what we know about AI and everything, like back in 19, 2009, 2010, like it was a different story. And maybe things that aren't as sophisticated as they may have once seen can, are more apparent now. Mm-hmm. But that, to me, looks like it's the same fucking letter. Well, I mean, again, this it guy's a look journalist, like... and he's got, you know, handbooks upon handbooks of stuff. But, so but, I'm sure you could go through and find letters and rotate them and compile them to, like, you know... I bet. I would. I, I bet, but even then, I don't even think they did that. I think they were just yeah. relying on the gullibility of whoever is fucking reading whatever this thing, this paid advertisement was put on. Right. That's and true. Just, to, just to have someone, to have the conversation be like, oh, did you see that there's a letter? Like, this handwriting? I wonder who that individual is. But it's like, but again, name them. But again, right. charge him. They didn't even charge him in that. And they fucking were ready to fucking, they were bashing his head practically in this shit. Like in that fucking perfect murder, quiet town, whatever fuck. So I was like, it's suspicious that, that she even brings it up. And it and then I think it signifies almost just how 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 vast an organization of even just a disinformation campaign mm-hmm. can be. Where you just have, maybe maybe even if it's just, let's just say like, let's say, let's say Bobby. You and I, let's say, let's say we went outside, we strangled a goose. And then and that goose died and we had like two people see us, but then like we just like hid the goose's body. Yeah. Nobody and then we were like, Oh my god, this goose is like it died, but we don't know how it happened. Those two people try to say shit. And then if we just got ten people to uh, to periodically <laughs> to gaslight them. To just gaslight them. To, 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 no, yeah. There's a couple sure. people, couple people whose jobs would it be to put it on Facebooks. A right. couple people would just be like, while they're jogging, so just saying, to talk I think about they it. have like a, I think they have a yearly PR budget for. I, yeah. what, we, what are we going to spend this year's PR budget on? It's like, oh, we got this girl who's mm-hmm. like, we, let's let's bring her back, you know, yeah. spend it on this. They're like, oh, let's do another sixty minutes Australia. Yeah. Uh, you know. And it's like I'm getting married. This one's free, guys. And John's company, Access Graphics, their job. What was it again? It was to like sell like pre-made so- like software. Wasn't it like to resell Software it? Software that was already like there. Yeah. But it's like, I think Which it's sounds like, to me like. And it's like the departed type thing with microprocessors where I'm sure it's like technology that could also control missiles and shit. So. Probably stuff like that. Probably maybe even just like um, drug distribution and money. <laughs> no. Mo- and money trafficking. Okay. Well, it's you're like throwing out uh, unfounded claims. I'm just <laughs> saying it's like high level shit, you know? Uh, when the criminals have a getaway car that nobody else can catch up to because they've been using alien tech to make their jets. <laughs> then they can just do whatever they want. Well, that's a great note to end on, I guess. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Chris Wolf cleared. It was an interesting ride, though, and it's a good look at, you know, how somebody could be possibly accused. Like, yeah. how, how it looks, I mean, right off the bat. But, you know, it takes time, and then you realize it's like, oh, this person didn't do it. So Yeah, this was an interesting foray. I mean, you know, this was definitely an episode where I spent more time listening and learning about someone who, frankly, you know, just kind of almost is like a... A spinoff of the whole case. So it it's is. Like, yeah, we're gonna give you know, <laughs> and I'm like Chris Wolf. Who the fuck? And then it's like, oh, Chris Wolf. And now by the end of it, I'm like, oh, okay, well, Chris Wolf. You know, it's like it's old old buddy Chris Wolf. Though. You know, but we got to talk about it because it's something we and it has to be addressed just to kind of to kind of clear the way a little bit of like all the noise that's mm-hmm. in this whole thing because. Mm-hmm. 
sometimes you may be going down one one path and a lot of a lot of if, if the if the police aren't going to be given the information and the the, the 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 closest thing we have to any suspects in this case are the parents who are dying off then it's like then it, guess what like we're, we're losing our first um our primary sources too so then it's like a matter of looking at all the information that this amazing invention called the world wide web mm -hmm. which is first of its kind in this cycle of, uh, of society uh <laughs> That happened to be emerging, and and the journalism in America happened to be utilizing that. And there were forums and people, and there's archives, and there's so much stuff that wasn't available. It's not like I could be like, oh, let me go into the Jack the Ripper case and and see what was on the internet then. What, yeah, what, and we what got like almost thirty shit years worth of knowledge to come through now. So oh my nice. God. And so it's just like, okay, here's Chris Wolf. Maybe maybe somebody would bring him up. Be like, oh, but did you look at Chris Wolf's handwriting? You know, I'm just saying, like as I, like, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but now we can just say, oh yeah, Chris Wolf, like the guy who was cleared yeah, and cleared, cleared and cleared. And cleared. And cleared. And cleared. And, cleared. Yeah. and you know, and I got clear conscience. My conscience is clear because <laughs> I know that we that we do that kind of level of standard. Yeah. yeah. And, we, and we needed filler because we <coughs> yeah, do packs yeah. this week. So we're doing packs yeah. next week. Yeah. I mean, we do a lot of episodes, everybody. Not everything can be like a main event. And we're going to close down the uh, form soon. So uh, I'll have that in the description. So answer the questionnaire. Uh huh. Uh, that really helps us. Also, you know, go to uh, go check us out on Patreon. Yeah. Follow us on the socials. Send us unsolicited photos as well to our email. <laughs> yeah. Man. Love yourself. Dominated at gmail dot. Yeah. Com, you know, I love looking just, at Yeah. A picture mm -hmm. just says, this is what I look like. Yeah. I love it. I love because I'll just look at it. I, you know, I got, a, I got a whole binder in my bathroom. Nope. Okay. And I just I just breathe heavy. That's enough. And I spent forty five minutes just admiring, <laughs> admiring. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, I'm Bobby Pavlovsky, and I'm Daddy Ronald Reagan. And this is Mickey. And this is John, John Benet today. today.